Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro Benedetti and today I'm going to talk to you about the neural search improvements coming with Apache Solar 9.1 and specifically talking about approximate nearest neighbors and pre-filtering. So welcome and thank you for attending. So a quick introduction about myself and, and the company I work for. Uh, my name is Alessandro Benedetti. I'm Italian, coming from uh, an ancient Etruscan city, actually, in Italy, pre-Roman. And I work as a research and development software engineer. I'm also the director of my company. Uh, that, that's my hobby. <laughs> and I have a master's degree in computer science, and I am program committee member of uh, a number of international conferences in information retrieval specifically the European Conference on Information Retrieval, the Special Interest Group, Information Retrieval and the Science. I'm an Apache Lucene and Solar Committer and PMC member. And I work also with Elasticsearch uh, quite a lot. So my passion is around information retrieval in general, integrating search engines with artificial intelligence and machine learning. And in my spare time, I, I play beach volleyball and I go for snowboarding. So uh, my company, CIS, uh, we are headquartered in London. Um, I, I live in London, actually. I've been there for the last 10 years. And we work with open source software. So we are open source enthusiasts. We just don't work with open source software. We are actually contributing back a lot. So we support the community. We contribute back code. We help people using mostly Apache, Lucene, and Solar, but also Elasticsearch and Open Search recently. We also love research, so we are active researchers. We, we try to, to keep up with the latest papers and implement them where possible in Apache Lucene and Solar. Specifically, the, the areas of interest for, for my company are neural search, so the integration of deep learning technologies with search. Uh, the reason is called neural search is for neural networks and natural language processing integration with search, so all the branch of information technology that deal with natural language understanding. Learning to rank, which is the integration of machine learning to improve the ranking of search results in a search engine. And we've been also working a lot in search quality evaluation, so evaluate the quality of your search engine in a scientific way, so not just by trying queries and results. So this is an overview of, of what we are going to talk today. We're going to start with lexical search problems. So le for lexical search, I intend the traditional search when you just match terms from the query to the documents. Then we are going to talk a little bit about BERT and in general how large language models impacted search and how this brought to neural vectors-based search. Then we're going to talk about the Apache Solar implementation and the 9.1 release specifically, and some future works. So let's start with lexical search problems. So an example of lexical search, so traditional search problems, is the vocabulary mismatch problem. So this happens when the query terms doesn't match, don't match the terms in the document. So you have a difference between the vocabulary used at query time and the vocabulary used at index time. An example can be a query asking for how many people live in Rome. You could have two documents. One stating Rome's population is 4.3 million. And as you can see, lexically, the document has just Rome in common with the query. Also, another document could be hundreds of people queuing for live music in Rome. So this is a false positive. It has nothing to do with the query, how many people live in Rome, but it shares three query terms with the query. So people, live, and Rome. So we can see that the first document is actually much more relevant to the query than the second. So this is an example of vocabulary mismatch. Another example can be for the query, how big is a tiger? So you may have a term 
like big biggest that that match big this is doable with like traditional search engine using stemming but you may completely miss another document another relevant document that says pantera tigris can reach 390 centimeters nose to tail so this is a false negative because pantera tigris is the latin scientific name of tiger and the lexical search engine may not know that pantera tigris and tiger are the same animal so this is another example of vocabulary mismatch. In this case, you get a false positive. In the previous case, you got a false, a false positive, and now we get a false negative. In general, uh, lexical search engines have problem with semantic similarity. So we are just matching terms. So sometimes you may have queries that are completely different semantically, such as how are you, how old are you, they share mostly the same query terms, completely different meaning. Or you may, may have like on the opposite side of the spectrum, semantically similar queries that don't share any query terms. So how old are you? What is your age? You may also have problems with disambiguation with traditional search. So what's the price of an Apple share or what's the price of an Apple clearly have two completely different contexts. One is more likely to refer to Apple as a company, and another one is more likely to refer to the fruit. Another area where traditional search, this has nothing actually to do strictly with traditional search in uh, comparison to neural, but with like the days passing, we realize that sometimes information is not just in one document. So you may have actually the information, some part of the information in the document and some other part of the information in other documents. So neural search can help you in aggregating documents into a response. Effectively, when you have an information need, you just want a response. You don't really care about documents. Most of the times, it depends on the domain, of course. Sometimes you care about specific documents, but sometimes you just care about an information. And over the years, lexical solutions tried to solve these problems. Uh, for example, with manually curated synonyms or uh, hypernyms and hyponyms, so like specializations or generalizations of terms, stemming and lemmatization for th that are algorithmic attempts to solve the morphology changes in terms, like a, a tense of a verb, for example or gender slash number variations of terms. And also knowledge-based disambiguation, so linking your documents and query to uh, knowledge bases, such as Wikipedia, DBpedia, to disambiguate potentially like the query terms or the documents. But in the end, it's always term matching. So what happened with large language models then? So first of all, a very short introduction about a way, different ways to represent queries and documents. So in traditional search engine, you represent queries and documents using a sparse vector representation. So you are encoding your query and your documents into a vector, a numerical vector. In, a sparse, in the sparse representation, the cardinality of the vector is the number of terms in your dictionary. So for a document, you may have a vector that is pretty much all zeros, except the terms in the dictionary that appear in the document. And, and the same for, for the query. So the reason it's called sparse is because only few terms are in a document in comparison to the entire dictionary. So your vector is going to be 0, 0, 0, and then some ones. Uh, potentially, you may encode in the vector the term frequency in the document, so the number of occurrences of the term in the document. So if Apple uh, appears uh, 10 times in your document, the vector value at the position of, uh, of the uh, Apple term will have 10 as a value. And all the other terms that don't appear in the document will be zeros. On the other end, the dense representation will have a fixed number of 
of dimensions, so your vector will be shorter, and all the values, or pretty much all the values, and maybe there are going to be some zeros, but pretty much all the values are going to be different from zero, and will be like normally like float values. And, and this is the current approach used by neural search. And large language models are the way to produce those vectors. So what is a large language model? So first of all, it's a neural network trained on, actually pre-trained on a very large corpus or very large corpora, so a group of corpus. This may be like Wikipedia, maybe uh, the entire web, a portion of the web. Anyway, I mean, a lot of data. So normally large language models are pre-trained pre on, on very big corpora, and then you fine tune them to satisfy a specific task. So with the pre-training, what you get is a let's say, pattern recognition of a language to a certain extent in understanding to the level of how machines currently understand the language of a specific way of interacting between like the terms in the language and how the, the grammar, for example, works in a language. So you, you capture like meaning to a certain extent, but not related to a specific task. So large language models can satisfy many different tasks. They can generate text that may be used for essay generation, for text summarization, for translation, for many things. And one of the tasks, and specifically the task we, we are going to talk today, is for dense retrieval. So for searching and retrieving documents from a corpus. So what we are going to do is, is learn a representation for our queries and for our documents. And this can be done offline. So like currently, even if it's quite expensive to encode documents as vectors, you can do that offline at indexing time. So it doesn't affect that much your query time performance. So that's decently usable nowadays. So very shortly, how you pre-train a large language model. Uh, you mostly, you, you may approach, for example, this problem as a masked language model approach. So you're hiding part of the text in input and the model will, will learn how to predict the missing word. And this happens in an unsupervised way on a large number of sentences. And an example, of pre-trained large language model is BERT and all the family of BERT models. There are like many others like Robert, uh, Edistil BERT and many, many variations. But one of the first transformers, they are called transformers, sometimes like B encoders. Uh, it's, it's, it was just probably one of the first, so it's, one, it's the most popular, but you can find like many, many of them. So as I said, pre-training, this is normally something you don't do. So you, you, you just take a large language model that is pre-trained by a, a large organization on a large corpus. And potentially you're, you can just use a model that has been already also fine-tuned, but fine-tuning is something that potentially you could do in your company, in your problem. And fine-tuning for dense retrieval work in a way that you want to maximize the distance in terms of score between a positive score, so a document that is relevant to the query, and the negative score, which is a, a document that's not relevant for a query. So you encode the vectors, you calculate the cross entropy between the scores, and, and then you try to extend as much as possible the difference. So you refine in various iterations the, the weight in the neural network to, to make sure that you have like a biggest distance between a positive and, and a negative document.
But anyway, this is just to give you an idea on how you fine tune. So fine tuning happens with a, a set of samples that you must design and implement for your specific problem. And there are many models already available, especially in English. So you may not even need to fine tune for dense retrieval. But if you have a very niche domain, a very specific problem, you, you may want to do that. And if you're curious about the state of the art, there are various leaderboards around for various languages, and you can also directly download models on your own. So the current integration with, with Apache Solar happens effectively after you encode the query and the documents into a vector. So you encode the documents outside Apache Solar, and then you index the vectors already in, in Solar. And at the moment, because it, there's still, of course, development in, uh, in progress, but at the moment, there is no model management for inference in Apache Solar. So you need also at query time to encode your query outside Solar, get the vector, and then ask Solar for the vectors. And no update request processor at the moment, so what we, are wor what we are working on is a way to hide completely the neural side to the user. So you are going to just input text to Solar and maybe specify, your admin will specify at configuration the model to use and Solar will do all, all the rest of the work. So what is actually neural search then? You get in input documents, text documents, you get in input query text, you use the large language models to encode the vectors, you index the vectors in specific data structures that are easy to be searched after that, and then you look for nearest neighbors of your query vector. So effectively, the similarity between the query and the documents is translated to a distance in the vector space. You may have studied at school different kind of distances between vectors. So mm, there are various. In uh, information retrieval, the most used is the cosine distance, but also Euclidean distance is, is supported by, by Solar. And you are effectively just calculating the distance between points in a multidimensional vector space. And the closer a vector is to the query, the highest the semantic similarity. The initial approaches were using just exact nearest neighbor. So you were getting the, the query vector the, and a document vector calculating the distance and getting a score. And you were doing that for your query and all the documents in the corpus. This is actually quite expensive. And nowadays, researchers move to approximate nearest neighbor techniques. So you don't want to calculate the distance for the query and all the documents in your corpus, but you use data structures you built at index time to find the, the closest neighbors to your query. And these strategies are based on trees. Uh, um, there are various like family of solutions. Uh, the most important ones like historically are tree-based techniques, ashes-based techniques, and graph-based techniques. In Solar, we use graph-based techniques. So how we model vectors in the specific data structure to have like a quick retrieval at query time. We use hierarchical, navigable, small world graph. It's normally abbreviated as an acronym, as HNSW. And there are also a couple of nice papers about it. So you, if you are more curious about how it works, you can, you can take a look to the papers. I will give you just a quick understanding of it. So a hierarchical navigable small world graph is a proximity graph. So first of all, it models the vector as vertices in the graph and the links, the arcs between the, the nodes of the graph is a proximity relation. So two points are going to be linked only if they are close to each other. And it's called hierarchical because this data structure works on many different layers. So you have 
a first layer, a second layer, a third layer, and you go down the number of layers. And the reason it's hierarchical is because it follows an approach similar to skip lists. So skip list is a is an algorithm to to get like a nice insertion time and retrieval time in lists of sorted integers. And the way it works is that you have a certain probability for a node to appear on a high layer, and then you have a probability equal to one for a node to appear at the zero layer. So you will have all the vectors at the zero layer, the one below, and in, in a more difficult uh, probability of having the same node in an upper layer. So this means that at the top layer you will have a number of nodes that is much lower than the number of nodes in the zero layer. And the, the reason is structured in this way is to have like a quick and fast retrieval because you, you start from the top, you quickly explore the graph and then you go down to refine the search of nearest neighbors. So effectively, uh, the, the longer edges on the top are for fast retrieval and the short edges on the final layer is for getting like accuracy in, uh, in the approximation for the proximity of your nodes. In solar, we use internally Apache Lucene. Apache Lucene and Apache Solar used to be the same project. So how many of you are familiar with Apache Lucene? So raise your hands if you ever heard of Apache Lucene. Okay, and maybe one. <laughs> so Apache Lucene is a library. It's a Java library for search engines. It's, a, by, it's an open source library by the Apache Software Foundation and it's the core internal of Apache Solar. And how many of you have ever heard of Apache Solar? Never, never use it? So Apache Solar is a, a search engine built on top of Apache Lucene uh, by the Apache Software Foundation. It's open source and written in Java. So Luci Lucene gives you the internal libraries implementation. So you will get like, for example, the vector-based search is implemented internally in Lucene, and then Solar is the server that exposes this functionality. So you, you will be able to just get uh, Solar, uh, spin it up, and then uh, you, is, you can interact with Solar to HTTP requests, for example. So I don't know if any of you ever heard of Elasticsearch, for example. Elasticsearch is a competitor of Apache Solar, is another open source project. Uh, Elasticsearch uses Lucene the same as Apache Solar. They're very similar as, as solutions. Uh, the only difference is that Elasticsearch is from the Elastic company. Uh, so it's open source, but nowadays it's a little bit more controversial. Apache Solar is fully open source. And the uh, neural search capabilities in Lucene were implemented starting in November 2020 with dedicated data structures. And the latest version in Lucene is Apache Lucene 9.4 uh, that uh, also offers you the possibility of using like um, potentially like smaller vector from a memory outprint. So instead of 32 bits vectors, I mean, each value of the vector 32 bits is, that is now the possibility of having eight bits vectors. So if you don't have a language model that requires like very specific values for a vector, you, you can uh, basically like don't waste uh, memory for that. So you can specify, first of all, as I said, the, the vector encoding. So if you're going to use a single byte for value or four bytes for value and and the distance so you specify the distance you want to use so euclidean dot product or cosine distance you, you do that at indexing time because you want to build the, the related data structures so solar implements neural search starting from solar 9.0 and with the latest release 9.1 we added some improvements 
So, uh, of course, as a, being open source, you're absolutely free to take a look to the code, to contribute back, and we have a Jira um, project from the Apache Software Foundation, open to everyone, for tracking the, the issues to work on and the issues that we committers are working on. So the way you can use Apache Solar 9.1 to implement neural search, first of all, starts from defining a, a field type for your, uh, for your dense vector field. So the way Apache Solar works is using a, a JSON structure for your documents where you have like the field name and a value or multiple values for, for that field. And your unit of information is going to be a document which effectively is a map key value or values, or also multi-value that supports it. And, and Solar uses the schema to understand the type of data that you're going to index in that field. So it can be a textual field, it can be a number, it can be a geographical point, and specifically to, to what we are talking today, it can be a multidimensional vector. And in your schema, you specify the dense vector field and the dimension, so the cardinality of your vector, and the similarity function, like the cosine similarity, for example. You have also like more advanced parameter uh, like the way the data structures and indexing time are built. These, for fully understand them, I, I would recommend to like read the original paper or, or at least a couple of blogs about the way hierarchical navigable more word graph work. But anyway, they are exposing solar so you can control them to affect the accuracy and the indexing time and also memory actually used for building the, the graph on disk. So index seed time, what you do, you just push your JSON document with an array of integers or float numbers, depending on, on the kind of precision you need for your algorithm to Apache Solar. So you have like your JSON with the ID of the document and your vector field or vector fields. Potentially you have multiple fields indexed. You can do the same in Solar. You can interact with the search engine using a JSON payload Nowadays it's the most used, but you can also use XML if you want, or potentially the, the SolarJ APIs. Then at query time, what you do, is you just run a REST HTTP call specifying the KNN query parser. KNN stands for K nearest neighbor. You specify the field where you have your vectors and the top K you want to retrieve. So this is going to return you the top K closer neighbors to, to your query. So the documents that are more likely related to your, your query. And then you pass the query vector. So just, uh, it's pretty much a standard way to interact, very simple. You don't need to, to add many information in there. And for your own curiosity, if you want to take a look to the code, anyway, I'm going to share the slides after the talk so you can also refer to, to the slide. But if you're curious about like where this is implemented in Solar being open source, you can take a look to the dense vector field implementation and the KNN query parser implementation. So you have the reference to the code. You actually find in the slides also the reference to the Lucene code. So if you're interested, that part of course is a little bit more complicated because you have like all the implementation of, of the algorithm like core, uh, but if you are willing to, for example, understand it better or contribute, you can take a look. Another thing that is quite important is the ability of combining dense vector search, so dense retrieval with sparse retrieval. So you may want, for example, to look for your top K nearest neighbors or documents containing a certain amount of query terms, for example or potentially you want to pre-filter your corpus first with lexical search and then run top K on top of those re the reduced results. And you will get in response documents with the score, which is a combination of the lexical score and the neural score. So the distance between the vectors plus 
uh, this core calculated by Apache Solar, which is uh, the standard BN25, pretty much. It's a little bit more complex than that, but in, in information retrieval, BN25 is uh, pretty much a, a standard approach based on term frequencies of, of query terms and document frequencies, so how many times a certain terms appear in, in the corpus of documents. Now, what, what was happening before, so in Solar 9.0 with filter queries, was that you were getting a, a bit set of the results, so all the results matching the filter query. So filter queries in Apache Solar is something you use, for example, after the selection of a, a facet or an aggregation. So uh, you are searching for hotels, for example, and then you filter by four stars hotels. So you are reducing the result set using some sort of additional condition. And a filter query will return you a set of documents. Your query will return you another set of documents. Potentially, you have other filter queries that will return you different sets of documents. And what was happening in Solar 9 was just doing an intersection of these different sets. So you were getting the documents matching the query, for example, hotels with star rating 4.0 with the hotels in Tokyo available uh, these days. And, and you get the intersection, and this intersection potentially could be just zero uh, items intersection. So with KNN search, so with K nearest neighbor search doesn't work that well because you are looking for the top K closer vectors. And if you first run the top K and then post filter with, for example, only a specific condition, you may get back zero results. Uh, because maybe none of the top 10 documents from a vector perspective contains hotels with, which are four stars. On the other end, what is actually much more likely is that you want to effectively first pre-filter, so you filter your hotels for star hotels, and then you get among those hotels, the top K. And this is called pre-filtering, and this is available in 9.1. Another functionality that we are going to work, uh, we are currently working on is re-ranking. So you first, for example, retrieve documents using lexical search, so query terms just matched uh, lexically, as traditional search does. And then you re-rank, so you can recalculate the score of the top K documents in, in that using the uh, vector distance functionality you want. We did some uh, initial benchmark. It's usable for small corpus. Uh, it's actually usable in general. Uh, of course, the you can tune it a bit. So if you have like billions of documents, you may need to to do a little bit of fine tuning of your parameters to build the graphs in in a way that is friendly with your memory in this space, but it's, it's usable at scale. It's usable in production, so it's production ready. And the, the latest changes we've done with 9.1 also include the fact that you don't need to configure it. I mean, it's, the configuration is a little bit easier now, even when you specify the more advanced parameters, and you can just effectively specify the algorithm you are you're using, which is by default, and the only current algorithm is hierarchical uh, navigable more world graph, and the, the specific parameter. So this is coming, this is actually been released um, a couple of weeks ago, the, the 21st of November, and it's available for download and use. And pre-filtering is available as well in 9.1, so you, you are able to first pre-filter your documents using lexical search and then just get the top K. So some of the things we are, we are working on and we are going to release with future version of Apache Solar, uh, first of all, the encoding of vectors values. So currently only 32 bits vector values are supported and a, a maximum cardinality of 1024 for a vector. So the, the vector, the longest vector you can have in Solar is currently 1024 elements, each element 32 bits. And as I said, maybe you don't need that precision, so you may want to use less memory and less disk space. So we are going to support eight bits elements for, for vectors. And another thing that is coming 
potential in 9.2 is a way to hide the neural side of things. So f your administrators will be able to push large language models to solar and then automatically when you push text to solar text is going to be converted to the vector for the documents so at indexing time through an update request processor for example or at query time by a query parser so the final the final user or anyway also the applications that use uh, apache solar won't need to do the encoding can just push the text to solar and solar internally will convert it to vectors uh, I, I link in here also uh, many additional resources so in in the blog uh, of, of my uh, company we are anyway try to update it as much as possible with the latest researches we do and the latest contributions we do and we also t tend to write blog posts to help people using this this thing of course you you have also the official apache solar uh, documentation that i mean I, I personally curate among with other committers uh, but there are also various blog posts so if you are curious to know more about this if you want to contribute for example if you want to help in the developments of uh, additional developments of neural search in apache solar you are very welcome to do so so this is, of course has not been a work just of myself so uh, a huge thanks goes to the lucene community which i'm part for but there are other people working on this topic a colleague of mine elia Porciani, that helped me on these developments christine cassandra and michael for helping me in the review and then final merge of the code so thank you very much and we have time now for some questions from the audience so arigato So now it's open to questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand. Okay, thank you very much for the great presentation. One question from my side. So um, I think this was about the different languages. So is there any difference perspectives relative to well, this library, like for Japanese language or Japanese Iconography like kanji characters, can we apply this logic also? Yeah, so there are, as I put it in here, uh, there are, for example, various models already available uh, on uh, Agin Phase, which is like a sort of repository for large language models. So the, the way you train a language model effectively starts from text tokenization that may depend on the language, specifically for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, there are like very specific rules uh, because we, we move from like uh, alphabets to uh, logographic uh, based language. So you have some differences, but then once you, you do the tokenization and the text analysis, then the, the pre-training is pretty much similar. So what happens is that you may find many more models for English language, of course, but there are language, large language models already trained on Japanese corpora and fine-tuned on specific tasks. So there's support for that. Um, so the, let's say that the specific to the language part is what happens at the beginning of the pipeline. So then you have a similar behavior between languages once you effectively split in tokens and train. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Do you have any other questions? Thank you. Arigato.